Can the McQ 110 from Deepcool be saved? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I typically review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans, but today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Today I'm going to be drilling into the McCube 110, more specifically I'm going to be drilling into the shroud of the McCube 110, and this is in hopes to improve the GPU temperatures when gaming. Now if you end up liking this video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really does help a lot. Plus, if you really like the channel and all the testing I do, then please consider becoming a patron. Doing so will give me more freedom to make videos like this one, because I'm pretty sure I'm about to piss off deep cool. And yes, I do now have braces at the age of 40, primarily because my jaw's pretty messed up from playing rugby 20 or so years ago, and my dentist has been yelling at me for a while now to do something about it. Apparently your jaw's not supposed to make that noise. Now, if you haven't seen my review of the McCube 110, you might want to check that out. I'll have it linked up there and down there. But simply put, I thought it was a beautiful, well-built case with shit airflow. Because even with five fans in this case, I was not comfortable with the GPU temperature. Many of you might be thinking, why the shroud? And my answer to that is, I want to keep this looking as stock as possible because I really do like the way the case looks. So if I went ahead and drilled a whole bunch of holes in the front panel, yes, it might help the temperatures, but it's going to look bad so I'd rather not touch the front panel. Now in hopes of keeping the case looking nice, because I do like the way it looks, I won't be just cutting a massive hole into the shroud. I've designed a simple pattern on a sheet of graph paper and this is to work as my guide. This design should look somewhat similar to other cases and the fact that most other case manufacturers have perforations in the shroud leads me to believe that there is likely a reason and that's why I'm gonna be just doing holes into the shroud. Now my plan to make all these holes is to use a center hole punch to mark all the locations that I want to drill. Doing this should make drilling into the steel a whole lot easier. Once I've punched all the holes, I'll be using a quarter inch drill bit to drill into the shroud. And based off my guide, I have 84 locations to punch and drill, which means I should probably get started because this is likely going to take me a while. So the punching went pretty smooth-ish, and I guess I didn't quite explain what a punch does before I started this whole thing. So for anyone that doesn't know, a center hole punch doesn't actually make a hole. It just kind of makes more of a divot type thing so that when you go to drill, it holds the drill in place so it doesn't just kind of go all over the place. It kind of lets you drill where you want to drill. Now I'm not really sure if you can tell by the b-roll or not, but I did end up bending the shroud a bit when using the punch. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure how much it's going to bend when I actually start drilling. I guess there's really only one way to find out, isn't there? Okay, that made one heck of a mess, so I'm going to have to go find a bin to hopefully minimize how much of a mess I'm actually gonna make here, because, wow. A few moments later. Well, that went okay, I guess. I did have an issue with the drill not really fitting into the case for the back two rows or three rows. So yeah, getting those was um, pretty difficult and messy. I did end up messing up the bottom part of the shroud. There's a whole bunch of spiky bits and everything that I had to all clean up. And I didn't record any of that. I did get some B-roll of the spikies. But yeah, so I made a pretty big mess and then had to clean it up and sand it and do all sorts of stuff. 
So I was focusing on the cleaning up and sanding stuff, so I didn't get that much B-roll of it. Sorry about that, but yeah, it, it was a mess. So by the time I removed all the spiky bits and cleaned everything up, I'm, I would, well, I am short on time here, so I, I've already built the case. So there's no real B-roll of me building into the case or anything like that. Sorry if you're interested in that kind of thing. But I am now ready to start running the tests. Now I'm going to be running only the game testing and I'm only going to be running one fan configuration and that being with the three Arctic P12 fans at the front, one Arctic P12 fan along the top, and then the stock fan at the rear. The reason I'm only testing one fan configuration is to simply save time. The reason I'm running this fan configuration is because it was the best performing configuration in my testing back in March. A few moments later. <sighs> okay, finished all the benchmarks. Now I did end up running two sets of tests. One with the holes as I've drilled them and then one with tape over those holes. And this is to, I guess, more of a sanity check or to confirm that the temperatures are the same as what I tested back in March to then not just comparing what I had in March to have testing, testing, more testing. So looking at the original testing I did back in March had the CPU temperature at 47.3C and the GPU temperature at 82.7C. Then my testing today with the holes taped up had the CPU temperature at 47.2C and the GPU temperature at 82.3C. So only a 0.1 Celsius difference for the CPU and less than a 0.5 Celsius difference for the GPU, which means they're within margin of error and almost the exact same, which is good. Then with the holes in the shroud, the CPU temperature went down one Celsius to 46.2 C, and the GPU went down three Celsius to 79.3 C. So both the GPU and CPU were lower, which was actually quite surprising. So what did we learn by drilling holes into this shroud? We learned having perforations in a shroud can lower GPU temperatures. With this case, I was actually able to drop the GPU temperature by a whole three Celsius. So this does mean Deepcool did mess up by not having perforations in the shroud of the McCube 110. Now I do wanna say that I don't think three Celsius is all that much. And because of that, I would not recommend anyone actually going and drilling their own holes into the top of the shroud of the McCube 110 or their McCube 110. But with that being said, this is something that Deepcool should have done in the factory. And this is nothing that anyone should ever actually have to do themselves. This is absolutely asinine that I was able to do this and actually drop the temperatures because you would think a company like Deepcool would actually know that having more ventilation around the GPU would lower the GPU temperatures. And the thing is, I didn't do a very good job. It is likely possible that if this was done at the factory level, that the temperatures would have dropped even more because it would be a lot easier to get a higher percentage opening like other manufacturers do if this, if this was done in the factory. So if you are looking for a micro ATX case with good airflow, make sure that the shroud does have perforations in it. And other than that, I really don't know what else to say, so I am just gonna add in the video. If you did end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. Uh, it is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and you get access to all the charts. You can also support the channel directly via Patreon. There is a link in the description. You might want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.